after the ball is over, after the skein is done, after the die lots finished, and you are short just one. Many a knitter has made. A tearful and desperate call, pleading with their local yarn shop, go after that ball. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Pen Hook and Needles podcast. And I'm trying to find my episode here. I think it's episode 451. Mm-hmm. Episode 451. My show notes have yes. disappeared on me. Just a second here. Ugh. There they are. I think you have eight projects, don't you? No, I have ten. I do two. No, you I have th- nine. 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 I have nine. Oh, I got so excited. I thought that I would be able to... <laughs> but I won't have to double any. We want to welcome all new and returning viewers to the Fun in the Woman Cave. We're glad that you found us, if you're new. And we hope that you see something you like and you will... I'm getting the picture here. Um, oh, and that, and that you will um, return. And if you are returning, we always are glad to have you with us. If you are new and or returning and in the shadows, please feel free, if you'd like, to subscribe to the uh, podcast, the channel here. Just, you know, gently tap the little subscribe button and the bell. I was watching one of Ellie Dashwood's the other day, and she was like, went on a little bit about, and we don't smash any buttons. It's not very genteel. <laughs> She's so cute. Okay. I think you'd like her, Mom. I probably would. Um, so, you know, feel free to join us officially that way. And if you want to take part in all the alongs and all the camaraderie and all that kind of stuff, that happens at our home group, which is phnpodcast.freeforums.net. phnpodcast.freeforums.net. And when you're there, uh, just say you want to join and we'll let you in because we just don't want any bots. Um, if you want to join, uh, we had someone join the uh, Patreon page. Did you take care of her? Uh, the um, Facebook page. Facebook. Page. I think that uh, someone else did. Patty did because I sent her a message saying no, no, no. Answer the questions. Patty, Patty can't do that. Hang on, unless uh, she's a moderator. I'll have to take a look and see because I asked her to ask, answer the questions. And I had her back. Yeah. Okay. That's what I was wondering. You, you, there, are, there are questions that need to be answered before, so we let know that you're a per- peek and see. so we know that you're a person. We want to let you in. Okay. So um, yeah, the Patreon group is for our Patreon members, and that's something different. But okay. Uh, I guess while she's doing that, I'll go. Yeah, through she hasn't team. answered the members' request. It's it's who I think it is. I, I think it is. It, yeah. it is. She's just, already part of everything. And she's, um, I'll give her a little while longer to see the qu- the questions. I've asked her asked questions, and then I'll do, I'll deal with it then. Yeah, she's she's super sweet. She probably actually has a life. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> go figure. Okay. Um, I am Marlisha, also known as Lady Fernico. I'm Ty, also known as Franciscan Gypsy. And you are supposed to go first for the tea. Right. We are also doing the bluish stuff again for the uniform. Although I really am wearing black. I intended to wear a different shawl. And I have purple, but I have a blue shawl, a blue sweater and a blue shawl. So Ty is blue shawl. Actually, um, yeah, the uh, mine the way that I have probably goes better with it because it has that grayish color versus... This is the color that, that made me want to knit this shawl and keep the shawl. It's that really pretty... Kind of a dove... Kind of but it's got a blue undertone it's got to a purple it. undertone purple to undertone, to undertone to lavender it. kind of kind of kind of like honestly kind of like the uh, one i like slate only it's a little lighter right because i fell in love with it mm-hmm. and that's the whole reason okay. i knit the entire shawl because it's not usually my colors because there's there's a reason i like slate so much and that's very similar yeah it's i wish just i had to check my notes to see what colorway it was in case you ever want to get it again. yeah because it's right up your alley it's beautiful um but my tea yes is this is actually my first cup of tea for the day. Usually I have it with breakfast, but I woke up with a headache, mm. and I wanted to sleep a bit longer. Yeah, we had our um, our second dose of the COVID shot. Although uh, my headache probably wasn't related to that. Thursday, well, I, I get migraines anyway. I was going to say that we got it on Thursday, and we've had weather and all you that like kind of me. stuff. Pretend you like me. Wait a second, I'm opening this. I've tried to get the camera so she wouldn't be half off screen, but no matter what, you know what happened? I think the camera got knocked. There you go. It's half it's okay. turned it's towards okay. me. Hold on. What happened was, I think when one of us walked by, we knocked the microphone. Mm-hmm. And it sometimes happens that that'll actually... Do something. Um, move. There we go. Now that's a little bit better. Okay, um. that's more of what I had before. Okay, so I'm having the T-Spot Earl of Grey. I actually think I might need to order more mm-hmm. again. 
that's a fabulous tea. Stephanie's uh, uh, turned us on to this tea. She gave us um, the first one we had of it. Yeah. The first sample we had of it, and it's wonderful. And I wanted a bigger cup of tea, like I said, because I try to do everything first before I resort to my migraine medicine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm trying caffeine as the next. Yeah. Um, and this is all I want is, is to hug all the bunnies mug. So I wanted a bigger cup than my other bunny mug. And my tea is in my Memento Mori because it's what I pulled off first. Uh, I'll taste this first. Because you love this tea. I do love this tea. And I had already put mine together. I probably or I could have possibly done this one. Mm. I do love this tea. Okay. Mine. You haven't uh, had it in a while. No, I haven't. I need to actually pick you. Next time we do it, I need to pick one up for you and pick one up for me because I think you're more likely to have it if you actually have it. Have it. Yeah. Instead of me just having it. <laughs> um. I also feel like I need caffeine. I haven't slept very well the last couple nights and weather and all that kind of stuff. And I, <laughs> I pulled out this, I know it's not Lent, but that's what I pulled out. So my Memento Mori mug. And uh, in it I have Plum Deluxe Tea and it's chocolate mint like the cookie oolong tea. Thank oolong you. tea, black tea, cocoa pieces, cocoa, uh, cocoa feel? Hang on. Cocoa Peel. peel. Cocoa peel. <laughs> I was like, what's a cocoa peel? Oh, no. Peppermint. <laughs> peel the cocoa. Well, this has peppermint in it, too. Because, obviously. And then uh, <laughs> roasted uh, coconut chips, vanilla, mint extract, essence. Steep. Okay. Do you need me to read it? It has caffeine. I, I got everything. I got everything. Yes, you did. Good job, Mom. Vanilla mint uh, essence. Did you see the coconut chips? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. This is, it has like your name on it. Yeah, I absolutely love this. And you can have a little bit if you want. Oh yeah, because I, I do remember liking this one. And I filled that one to overflowing, so I was dropping tea all over the place, which made me sad. That's good. I wonder if it's a bit weaker than normal. It's not weak or anything, but I'm wondering if it's a bit weaker because you overfilled it. Possibly, and also it tends to settle really well. Yes. it's Oh, um, it's, it's a good tea. I was just curious. Uh, not that I noticed. I, I, I haven't had it often enough to remember how strong or weak it is. I really wanted something like that. Because I've forgotten about the Earl Grey, the uh, Earl of Grey tea. Yeah, I, when I pick up my next one, I'll pick up a separate bag for you. I'm having a Stroop waffle. It's the uh, caramel oh, yeah. cinnamon. I'm having the same Stroop. I'm out of my lemon one. I have some if you want some. And I have some of the one that we call pumpkin if you, <laughs> if you want some of that. Okay. All right. Moving along. I have to be careful when I'm opening these because they're so soft. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay, the alongs. We have the PHN Christmas All Year Long Cal Cal Lal 2021, which started the first of the year and will go to the last day of the year, midnight. And I should just say midnight Eastern Standard Time. If it's open, yep, you put stuff in. Okay, so midnight our time. All right, that makes things a lot easier. <laughs> okay, that was a brilliant thing that uh, Patty did when she put posted that. Okay, so it goes until December 31st. Uh, Midnight Eastern but, Standard. But if it's open, you have that option. You have that option yes. because we are notorious for not remembering to close it. <laughs> well, sometimes we're asleep at midnight. I'm asleep. At oh, midnight. I'm never asleep at midnight. Um, okay, so anyway, this is. I just don't remember stuff. This is a Christmas along, and I'm going to read the rules on this one, and then just do the changes in the rules as we go through the other alongs. This is uh, crochet, knit, and loom knit projects only, and. Previous whips are allowed, but must be worked on during the long, which is not difficult since you had the whole year. Chatter and pictures are all in the same thread. One whip per project per week. The FO whenever it's completed. For those of you who are new to crafting, a whip is a work in progress. An FO is a finished object. Um, a, Have one, you seen the thing about whips and chains? No. One, one sock or something like that is not an FO. That is a... PhD, a project half done. Okay. Yeah, look, look uh, there's a meme out there where it's it's, it's talking about whips, WIPs, and chains as in crochet mm -hmm. chains. I figured it must be something like that. <laughs> okay, you pr uh, you can, Leslie said the whip is whenever you, you know, one, per pro one per project per week, one whip per project per week, and the FO whenever it's complete, it means that even if you've done the whip of that project mm -hmm. that week, say on a Monday or Tuesday, and you finish it on a Friday or something, you can still post the FO, okay? Any FOs that are in Franciscan Gypsies designs, Lady Furnico Creations yarn or my shawl pattern, or Lollipop Girl yarns or Laura Concert designs uh, patterns, 
will be eligible for two chances at a prize. And if you do a featured yarn with a featured pattern uh, for the finished object, you have three chances at a prize. As always, you are responsible for your own multiple postings. We have a hashtag of hashtag PHN Christmas all year 2021 on Instagram. The F if the FO uses 50 yards or less, please post with another FO of 50 yards or more. We also have multiple prize uh, prize potential for finished object for anything going to Operation Christmas Child or any uh, projects going toward Christmas donations, okay? And that could be a pregnancy center thing, you know, anything like that. Projects that are predominantly in Christmas colors, uh, sh the shades of red, blue, green, silver, gold, purple, and pink, along with white, of course, will be eligible for two chances of the prize for the FO only. This is to make sure that as many people as possible can take part in this because there are several people in our group, I believe, who don't do Christmas. Right. They do other things. So right. we, we want to make sure that they have the opportunity should they want to do this. Um, the prizes are given out quarterly. Oh, yay, everybody. Today, the prizes <laughs> that you guys won from last quarter and the first along are in the mail. Well, they're in the mailbox getting ready to be mailed out this afternoon. I did those last night, and they're I going out. Our, our mailman must hate us. Oh, I know. We, we send out all these packages and boxes and things. So he, so they are going out. Thank you so much for getting uh, your information to me as quickly as you did. I am notoriously, usually I've been trying really hard to get them out as soon as possible. But this last along was very hectic with Easter and with um, COVID shots and just mm -hmm. other things. So they're out. <laughs> they're gone. Honestly, it's a lot faster than it would be if I was trying to get them out on a decent mm -hmm. amount of time. So um, this, the next quarter prize for the Christmas along is a little pink, it's, it's a pink cotton yarn, cloud Aww. born, and a small pink bag. And then the just other in prize. time for like Mother spring. Mother's Day, spring and all that. Plymouth yarn. It is spring already, but yeah, and so yeah, it doesn't feel like spring. Well, it'll be summer. Uh, Plymouth yarn is the other prize. It's a Galloway colorway, three skeins, blue stripes. So one is the the bag and a and a skein of yarn. The other is three skeins of yarn for the for this long. Need a drink. Mm. You can't see through this without a drink. No, can't do it without a drink. Okay. Now the autism awareness is going strong. We are in our second month of this. That was no, a big reference, right? by the way. Is second second month for what autism aware? Uh, we're at the end of the first month. Yeah, because it's worth the twenty fourth. So we have another approximately a week for the first month. Yeah, because like it's April. April May June May June. Yeah. So it's April May June. So we're almost done with the first month of this, and I haven't been in there a lot. But I'm liking what I'm seeing. All the bright colors, all the stuff in my colorways. It's just mm -hmm. fun to see. Well, your colorways really do work for autism awareness a lot of times. Well, they've got, I've seen at least one, see the potential. I think I saw one that was, I um, can't remember if it was fun, fun in the Woman Cave or was something else. This would work. Yes, it would definitely work. So I'm looking, I love looking at all that. And most of the time I just kind of press like, like, mm -hmm. like, uh, unless somebody's tagged me because I just want to show that I'm seeing it. <laughs> but right. I can't, I just have so many things going on that I don't always have a chance to write like I'd like to. And I'm very grateful for our moderators who pick oh up the slack. Gosh, yes. our, our moderators and our uh, active members who pick up the slack a little bit. Rena is a godsend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she just is. Um, Let's see here. This cow cow began April 1st, go, goes to June 30th. The tag is hashtag PHNAA2021. And we're, uh, we asked Laura, uh, who's crocheting Whovian, to uh, co once again co host this with us. She does this with us every year. And as long as she wants to do that, that will probably be the case. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and you can talk to her about you know, her prizes and her rules. Right, because okay. she has different They're prizes slightly different. Or whatever. For us, um, they're pretty much the same as always, <laughs> except that they have to be bright colored, okay? Black, white, neutrals, non-brights should be kept to a min minimal. We'd like to have about three quarters to 85% all brights. Um, anything that is not that much bright will probably get moved by either one of us or Rena or Wombat of Doom or somebody yeah. to the show off thread, okay? Um, we have prizes and the shadows, uh, the prizes, I haven't pulled over here, so I'm not going to talk about them. <laughs> okay. Well, we don't usually talk about them to the beginning of the month. Beginning anyway, of the month. Right. So, it's so we have some wonderful prizes in the sitting over there that I just have to go through and pick out which ones I want to use. Indeed. But, um, what was I going to say here? 
I do not know. Chatter whips and FOs are on the same thread and just keep an eye out or an ear open for what those prizes will be as we go along. The Franciscan Gypsy, we, our featured t yarns and featured patterns are pretty much the same as always. Franciscan Gypsy's designs, patterns, anything Lady Fernico Creations, which means my yarn or my pattern, my one pattern, anything that's Laura Concert, that's Lollipop Girl Yarns, and I think her designs are Laura Concert designs? I think creations? so. I think so. I think so. Um, <laughs> I'm not completely certain on that. The Braided Bright Cal Pattern by ten, 10 Hours or Less and the Autism Aware Awareness Bare and Weighted Lap Pad by a Modest Creation as formerly Miss World. Uh, those are all eligible for two chance at a prize for the FO. If you use my yarn or Laura's yarn with one of those patterns for the finished object, once again, three chance at a prize. <laughs> Sorry, guys. You are always responsible for your own multiple postings. As, I just can't, I can't wait to see all the different... I, I just love seeing all the different bright Oh, stuff. yes. It's so sure. much fun. We do have one prize that I can tell you because it's a pattern and I don't have it. It's a digital pattern. And right. it was donated by Looney Hiker once again, who's Pat. Been very generous with us the, the last few alongs. She is donating a pattern of the winner's choice from her patterns. And she... Uh, I think we'd see her patterns on Etsy, right? Etsy and on um, Lovecraft. Okay. So that's cool. No, Ravelry and Lovecraft. Is it Ravelry? Ravelry and okay. Lovecraft, yeah. I thought, I thought she was on Etsy for some reason. She, she might be, but I'm not aware of that. Okay. Okay, the last along that we have to talk about is the one that Patty, who is Wombat of Doom, and B-Wing, who is Brittany, are doing together. We, oh, Brittany's been knitting again. She, uh, oh, stuff, yay! She uh, was knitting on Hitchhiker. Congratulations, Brittany. So, That's awesome. yay, Brittany. It was purple, I think. Of course. But anyway, this is... a. Uh, Patty and Brittany doing this. We're providing the platform. They're doing everything else because we do want to support this. Yes. Okay, this runs from March 1st through midnight, June, uh, which is June 30th, 2021, Eastern Standard Time. And I'm going to read this because that's their rules, not ours. They're pretty similar to our rules, but these are their rules. No previous whips are allowed, so the project has to be started no earlier than March 1st of this year. Items eligible for the comfort along can be knitted, crocheted, or loom knit. Specific items that they're really concentrating on are dishcloths, washcloths, and hats, especially hats for men and boys, okay? So just, you know, keep that in mind while you're knitting. And as I said, you know, it doesn't mean you can't do females, but they do need men and boys, okay? Right. And they suggested maybe um, a pattern like the Fits the Whole Fam hat by the Cozy Up Knit Ladies, um, since they're very, very stretchy and can fit multiple sizes. Chatter and pictures are on the same thread, one whip per project per week, the FO whenever it's completed. If you're also in Comforting Crafts Facebook group, feel free to post your pictures there. Prizes will be randomly generated by us uh, from the thread, from our thread. I mean, you might still be posting things over on the Comforting Crafts page, but our stuff, you know, for the prizes, it will be from our thread. Okay, I don't think they're going to be doing anything from the Comforting Craft um, Facebook page. Right. Um, Sorry, I was like, T. Hashtag for Instagram will be PHN Comfort Along 2021. Okay, and you can contact Brittany for the mailing address. We, oh, the prizes are, uh, so far they have two skeins of dishy yarn, dishcloth pattern booklets, handmade greeting cards by B-Wing. We have, Ty is doing a uh, pattern book, and I'm doing a skein of yarn. So And by pattern book, it's not a new pattern book, it's the one that, her pattern tortoise book. versus hair. Her pattern book. So, you lots of nice ch uh, prizes there, okay? I've All simply right. not had the brain power to work on designs the way I want to. Okay, so you have the first prize. Uh, first, boom. Yeah, let me finish my decrease. There we go. Okay. Um, oh, this is easy. The only design I've worked on <laughs> this week. Uh, because Davina really wants to make sure I finish her Christmas stocking in time. For Christmas. For Christmas. This is very important to her. So, it's the Davina Christmas stocking. I work on it a little bit most days of the week. Um, this week has been a little bit less with getting the vaccine, um, and things like that. Right. And I had to send packages out one morning, so that took up some of my knitting time. Mm -hmm. But, yes, this is, that's what this is. Okay, the first one you guys <coughs> are quite used to seeing being the first one. This is my Spoiled Bunny Stop Scarf from the Cerebell Scarf Pattern. Isn't Sarah it so Sousa. great that you, it's so awesome and it's working out so nicely. It's a good thing someone had the idea of becoming Sarah She needs to pat herself on the back to feel good. <laughs> she she just can't quite let it go. No. So this is I test never let me test go. designer yarns. I think it's test yeah test designer yarns. And I'm about actually I'm about 
The colors are so saturated. Maybe about a quarter or a third way through the skein. It's a big skein. It's worse I love away. working with her yarn because they're saturated. And her yarn generally mm -hmm. smells like roses. I don't have a smell. Okay, like well, it. maybe it's only the mini skein that smells well, like roses. Well, also, I mean, this is an old skein. I, I have an old, old skein that still has a slight uh, scent to it. I am going to do something I should have done a long time ago. I'm going to move this up here. <laughs> so so then you know where you're at. Where I'm at. Mm -hmm. And... Yeah, this, this is working out really nice. I didn't do a whole lot. Generally, I work on this for the podcast. <laughs> so it gets worked on when it gets worked on. It'll be finished when it's finished. Finished when it's finished. And that is a reference. It is a reference. It is a movie reference. It is. Oops. My tail's caught in my... I wonder if Patty will get it. Stephanie might get it. Yeah. Let's see. Hold on. There we go. Well, we've used it before, so anyone who's watched this for any, any period yeah. of time has heard it at some point. doesn't necessarily mean they remember it, unless they're no. Laura, who seems to remember everything we ever said. <laughs> who's the other one um, who always remembers stuff? I can't remember if it's Angie's Hip. Um, somebody who just remembers... Well, Angie's Hip usually remembers the music, music stuff. stuff. She's really good about that. Um, and posts videos. We haven't heard from her much lately. No, we I haven't. hope she's okay. Yeah. She's sweet. Yeah, she is. Um, yeah, but Laura you, is like the one who'll be like, we said something random yeah. like five years, years ago. ago. <laughs> 50 she'll, episodes ago. She'll remember where we were when we said it yep. and what it was we said. Like, she does remember stuff. And we also have a couple people who look at back episodes and they're That's like, oh true. yeah, you said it here. I think Laura just remembers it, though. I think she does. I think she just has like one of those memories where it's just like, oh yeah, Which that. is kind of awesome, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty funny. Yes, it is. Okay, sorry. So, I guess it's time for me to do a thing. A thing. It's a thing. It is a thing. Uh, okay, let me take a look at my show notes. Because with so many things, um, apparently it's, someone came to, named Tub Turkey, who I might know is on Instagram. I have no idea who Tub Turkey is. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Uh, just opening my show notes. There we go, because they closed themselves. Alrighty. First one to talk about is this one I think I only worked on the podcast come here I know you're hiding there we go all right mm -hmm. in my I might have worked it one on Sunday but I think I only worked on it or after the podcast I might have worked on it slightly but I think I only worked on it Saturday I'm always disappointed when we do the COVID shots I bring something to work on and I don't work on it well, I worked on it the first time. I didn't the first time um, either. I think I was trying to settle myself because I had such a bad reaction to, not to the shot itself, I don't do well with stimulation, right. and leaving the house can really trigger me into a flare. Well, with you, I was I, I'm kind of worried on ours because I went with you. Uh -huh. I was worried about your reactions and stuff. And with Davina's, I wanted to make sure that she was Calm. distracted. Mm -hmm. So we always playing games with her and stuff, so my, my stuff didn't get worked on. Uh -huh. <laughs> It was okay. Hope Domina gets that, someone like that nice little student again. Okay. Yes, I hope so. <laughs> Poor girl. She's not a little student. She's <laughs> she's all, she's probably almost graduated. She is a little student to me because she's very young. Oh, I'm in the middle of a row. I must have been working. You on. pulling a Lindsay. I'll have to finish knitting on this. Um, Lindsay is someone that we knew a while back that had a podcast. It was um, Three Stitches? It was Three Stitches. Three Stitches. Mother and two daughters. And they're I so sweet. Them. I love them. I'm sad that... but. They all, you know, they went to college, they started working. and I think you know, both of the girls are teachers now. Or at least one of them was. I think one is a teacher and one is a psychiatrist or psychologist or something. I yeah. Think, I think Lindsay's in psychiatry. So, I mean, life happened. It did. Yeah. So. The sweetest then, people you ever want to meet. One of the shawls that I knit was a pattern that mm -hmm. uh, the mom gave me. I gave her a plurk. Oh, uh, that's right. Um, no, I think you gave a, a plurk to... Um, uh, no, I Kathy. gave I gave blip to Kathy. You gave blip to Kathy. That's yeah. right. What happened was, uh, I don't know why I thought a fish was plurk, but I made a fish and I gave it to her and I called it plurk. <laughs> was there a fish picture on plurk? I don't know what my rationale was for that. And I don't even know if plurk still exists. I don't know. Does anyone, I mean, most of y'all probably remember plurk. Yeah. It was basically like Twitter. Well, Packy Knits is still on because she, she's. Oh, that's right. Because she day. always. She, she always was on there. Yeah, she was. Um. Uh, Anyway, I think that's where I met her actually. This is my Silver Shed USA tree frogs bag. And this is my on the forest floor, which is the same as shawl as what mom has over there in case she gets too hot for a sweater but too cold for um, Oops, uh, this nothing. One. This one. Now, I will be leaving out these whole things. And I have over there, but I'm not picking it up. This pattern, actually. 
This is like a great show and tell, me accidentally grabbing the wrong one. This original pattern, this came from the original kit. You can see where they have twigs. The, the twigs. Since then, I've not done, added the twigs in because I don't really care for the twigs. And I asked her when she did mine not to do the twigs either. Yeah, but this one's not hers to own. She's just borrowing that. Um, and so this is my uh, Buttercups and Bluebells field on the forest floor. And this one, besides leaving out those little holes at the bottom, I'm adding extra rows to make it bigger. Mm -hmm. I think I'm adding extra increases too when I do that. Are you? Mm -hmm. To make it a little wider. The pattern, just keeping the repeat. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I've done some pattern tweaking towards the end. Uh, which means that by the time I get to bind off, I'll probably want to shoot myself because <laughs> this shawl already is very large well, by the time you get to the end. It, it, it has that particular kind of bind off, right? Where you would like get a, gain a gazillion stitches. Does it have that kind of a bind off? I can't remember. No, it's not the it's not the problem with the bind off itself. It's just that it's so wide. There's so many stitches on the needle by the time you get to the bind what off. What pattern was it that we had? And we had the bind off, and before you bound it off, you had to do back and front like every stitch. I think that's one of K's. It might be. Oh, it was probably the sock knitters. Yeah, it might be the sock knitters. I, mean, I, I love because that because you get a ruffle on it. Yeah, it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, it's one of the few things I have that has the ruffle on mm -hmm. it. But no, actually, I think I gave you my sock knitters because mm -hmm. the shape is a uh, triangular, and I don't usually wear triangular shawls. But yeah, that's what this is. I need to finish my row. I love the colors in this. They're so happy. We just put down the fact that I'm working. Again, this light green isn't usually something that I'd wear. Yeah. But I do love it. Dragon's That's Flight. Beautiful. beautiful. Uh, and this is Squash, Squash Blossom, Blossom mm -hmm. Inkwell, mm -hmm. Dragon's Flight. It's a really nice color combination. It is. And it matches the one hat that I intended to match. But I, I'm really glad that I was able to put these colors together because it wasn't something that immediately screams to put together but when you put it together it looks really nice it reminds me of something it makes me think of school colors it actually matches the bag really it well. does not the uh tree turtles bag yes tree frogs <laughs> tree turtles bag <laughs> <laughs> that I'm a is, people who've watched us forever will know that mm -hmm. i had a period of time where i was so brain frog that no matter what i did brain I, frog yes I was brain frog <laughs> <laughs> my my brain became a frog um Bane fogged that I can't Bane fogged? I said brain. Bane fogged. Yes, I was Bane. Bane. <laughs> Bane, I'm sorry, guys. Bane I'm, was a frog. I'm a little punchy. I'm tired. I'm a little punchy. So anyway, in my uh, Knitter's Magic, very soft, dark flowers bag is the Welcome Little One Project. I love the Knitter's Magic bags. They're mm -hmm. so soft. I mm -hmm. think both of my bags are incredibly soft. Right. And I think it's the same person who makes them. I think she, yeah, I think she makes all of them. I, I like all her bags she makes. She has wonderful bags. I, I have one that's not as soft, and you'll see it later. It's my owl bag, mm -hmm. and it's not soft because it's print. Right. I mean, it it's, not, not it's, a, not, it's not the same maker, is it? I think, think it is. You think so? I, she doesn't put her name on the bags, so it's frustrating. She needs to put her name on the bags. Yeah. So this is my on the forest floor. This is not on the forest floor. I don't know why I always want to call this that. I think because it's called on the porch blanket. Oh. It's, it's my welcome little one project from the on the porch blanket by uh, 5410 Studio, which does I does it only come in baby blanket or is it also? No, she has she has. I think she has a uh, multiple sizes. Okay, because that makes more sense for it to be on the porch then. Um, can you see the 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 starting of the pattern there? Well, you're curling a little bit. Hold on. Yeah. Um, Yes, now I can see. This is a restful pattern. I really enjoy it. I, as much as I love 5410, I've not yet finished anything. This will probably be the first one I finish because I really do enjoy it. It's simple. I can see if I'm making a mistake right away mm -hmm. so I can fix it right away. Well, and, and usually, every once in a while, it's nice to have a pattern thing in something that's white. And mm -hmm. that's the way I felt when I knit the one shawl in white. But I think I ended up giving it to you. No, I, you knit it in white. I knit it in blue. Right. I wanted to. Oh, you talking about white. Lala shawl? Lala yeah, shawl. I wanted to knit it in white. Because because Heidi did it. Because so Heidi did it. Looked amazing. Yeah, I had that in my Lady Fernico Creations um, bare necessities. And uh, the one I knit was in um, uh, Forever Blue Jeans. Yes. This um, again, I would, it was a triangle shape. So I would got yeah. It. I would like to make this in either my cask of Amontillado or in. Um, I have a really pretty green. I can't remember the name of it. Oh, is it the one that you gave me? It's grandmother's house? That might be the one I'm thinking of. The one that I'm using in the cow? 
That might be it. The other one that might be pretty, and they haven't seen it Because I have Amontillado and Grandma's House and that cow. There's, there's another one that I did from the Advent Kit that um, you guys haven't seen yet, unless you got the Advent Kit. And I love. I think that would look really pretty. That's here. that's the one they have. No, no, I'm trying. I know, but this one's blue. It's um. Oh. The, um, is that the uh, the night one? The, no, um, that would be pretty too. No, the one I was talking about. Boy, I spent all this stuff here. Um, I'm not too uh, fond of my own yarns. Um, <laughs> uh, she no, hardly ever knits with her own yarn. Fixing the snow. I don't remember what that one looks like. I have to look at it again. Yeah, I'll show it to you later. It's. I don't want to give it away because I'll put it up for. Uh, for Christmas, you know, later, maybe Christmas in July or something, you know. Mm -hmm. But anyway, this is, this is... You're going to need to start getting crack lacking if you're thinking of Christmas in July. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to have to do that. We'll see about doing that. Anyway, so this is, this is my Bare Necessities, and it's a bulky we weight really yarn. We went off topic. Yeah, well, we do that. It's mm. kind of what we do. Okay. Okay, so I guess it's me again. Let me check my show notes. You see, my intention is just to finish his row, which means I'll probably be knitting on this the rest of the podcast. <laughs> because it's a long row. It goes on and on and on. Actually, what I need to do is finish the row of the one beneath this, which has a shorter row. So I, that's not in the row when I have to show it. Okay, so... What are you talking about? Oh, I, yeah, that the one. The right, one right, I was right, actually right. working on. Cause you said row beneath it, and I didn't know what you were talking about. like... How are you? I thought you already finished with the row. Well, you can it. actually, if I really wanted to, I not in the back side like this, but mm -hmm. I could knit in the stitches below it. It's called, oh, what is it? Well, they have um, that. I know that the the that Andre and Carlos called something like knitting in the grandmother stitch or the because oh. um, you can do it. Crochet. You could do it the mother stitch. Yeah, the grandmother stitch. Guys, you, you all who watch Arden and Carlos, you know what I'm talking Sue, about. Sue watches them, I think. Yeah, I think, though, it's usually for increases when they do that. I know that I ha they have um, a kind of a drop, not a drop stitch in terms of the way you do for knitting where you drop a stitch, but where you go to the next stitch below or even two, and it's an elongated stitch for crochet. Mm -hmm. um, well, it will actually kind of create a similar effect probably to what you get with those twigs. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Um which, to get those twigs, that's more of a, I believe it's called a surface crochet. Mm -hmm. Anyway. I did that for one of uh, George Tenars or less, his mitts. I, I mm -hmm. only finished one of them, but I, I had to do the surface crochet for that. But, um, next act. Sorry. <laughs> you know where you kind of hit a nerve wrong? You mm -hmm. get like a shock down some? Mm -hmm. Did that to my, my leg. <laughs> my head's starting to clear up a little bit. I must need the sugar and the caffeine. <laughs> must have. In my... Silver Shed USA, oopsie, bunny bag. Oops, it's a bunny. Hope you have your drinks. Cheers. Is and Emma, I'm taking my time. I got a half a cup in here still. <laughs> yeah, that's unusual for you. Mm -hmm. Sunday Funnies house socks. The thing that happens to me is that I will get talking mm -hmm. or knitting or whatever, mm -hmm. and then by the end of the podcast, I'll forget that I haven't finished my tea, right. and I'll nearly spill it all over the place when I'm packing stuff up yep. to go back in my room. Um, so, Sunday Funnies house socks for mom. So, the pattern is a dance all night socks. I'm using Miss Babs Yowza in the Funny Papers colorway. I hear the song in my head. What song? Dance all, dance all night. Oh, you keep talking, and I can never hear the song in my head because I don't know the song. I don't think. I can't remember who sings. It's disco, right? It sounds sounds like, like it's. It disco. sounds like it'd be disco name, you know. I'm it's wondering if it's uh, David Bowie. Davina would probably know. Yeah, uh, I was not a big fan of his. There are a couple things I like, but uh, I'm not sure. He if that's was one weird. <laughs> yeah, he's a little strange. Um, <laughs> a little strange. I'm not sure if some of it was drugs or if he just had like it was all different personas he would get into mm -hmm. and stuff. I mean, well, Ziggy Stardust and all that kind of stuff. Well, apparently he could kind of get lost in them, mm -hmm. um, almost like a method actor does. I think he. I sometimes I wonder if there was some. I don't know. It just he was very uh, odd. I remember him in Labyrinth. Oh, um, that was when I first saw him. He could be really scary. <laughs> yeah, he was. <laughs> Creepy. The Goblin King. Mm. Oh, he was kind of creepy. He was. He did a good job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And their version of uh, um, the. I, let me tell you. Was it? Um, tell you a man what man man with the power, oh, but power he man. did it with baby. Instead. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, way off topic. 
sock, first sock, has been done for a while. Whee! Yay! Sock, 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 sock. Suck to me, Second suck to me, suck sock. To me. Just knitting on the foot now. So once I get to the end of the foot and the toe, mom will have her socks. Yay! And I will no longer have to knit with this yarn. Two socks. <laughs> You're going to save enough for the um, a square, though? Oh, yeah. yeah. There'll be more than enough left. I mean, it doesn't take a full... Well, yeah, that's a 500 and some odd yards. Yeah, thing. I'll probably give you back the yarn simply because this isn't... You know, after I Excuse take me. what I need for the, a square, mm -hmm. simply because this isn't a, a yarn that I usually like. I have no idea what I would do with that. Maybe become a turtle or something. Yeah. And maybe a square as well. I actually think it'd be kind of good as an owl. It's kind of dark for an owl. Owls can be dark, though. I know. Did or at least see, the chest area. Did you see the owl that Benning posted on my Facebook? No, I have I'm very inconsistent on Facebook. Yeah, I, I just... I, I basically go on five dinners one hour, my Paul line page. Yeah, I don't go a lot and of places, but... Um, I think that's about it. When I see that I've got notifications for something, I want to see who's done it. Yeah. So, and I was posting at the Novena, and I went and looked at it, and it's white owl with red eyes. <laughs> that's really albino owl. It, I forget what he called it. It, it had a name, and it was, it was actually kind of cute. It was even with the red eyes. Mm -hmm. it, it looked a little uh, intimidating. Yeah, I would was, imagine so. But it was because you usually kind of when you think of red eyes, you know, and. In well, you think of like vampires. Yeah, the, the movies, they tend to be evil things. Did you know that Tolkien had, like, in uh, his earlier stuff, like his background stuff, like in Cimmerillion, vampires and werewolves? Oh, did he? Different okay. than what we have in the normal culture. But yeah, they were in there. Oh, I didn't know that. I, yeah. Huh. Uh, well, apparently, like, those wolves that, remember, I, that surrounded them, they're kind of related to those. And yeah. the werewolves aren't the same. It sounds like they're just really smart wolves. Well, werewolves, I mean, are a little more mainstream, I th arguably, maybe, than vampires but yeah okay like uh to get away at one point sauron turns into a vampire and flies away that's weird yeah 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 yeah, yeah. you 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 totally need to read some really there's like because, all sorts of weird stuff in there that we don't know about because that's that implies that he doesn't have a soul if he can become a vampire apparently i guess vampires different in tolkien's world maybe guess, he created yeah. a completely different thing I mean, does he actually call it a vampire yeah that's weird yeah hmm Okay, let me get to my next project here. That's what surprised me. All right, my next one is my On the Garden Path project. It's a scarf, and this is just something I kind of threw together. Um, I was going to try to make it a design, but I think I'll wait and do something later similar. Where is my bag for this? It is in my... Where is it? Where is it? In this bag. Oh, I think I switched it out. So I didn't do a whole lot on this. Just a little bit, enough to say I worked on it. Okay, so. I'm a little bit tangled up in the yarn. Uh-oh, so tangled I, up. Yeah, I didn't make a whole lot of progress. I keep forgetting. You can see where it's kind of twisting on some of the sides. That's where I forgot to put the garter. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so. you need to follow your own pattern, Mom. Yeah, I just, well, I hadn't worked on it for so long, so I'm just going to, this will probably be another cowl, just because I keep making mistakes. So... Well, thankfully, it's dark enough that no one can see it. Nobody mistakes. really sees it. So it's a really pretty colorway. This is James C. Brett. And they're not very good about putting their colors on their... No, usually it's just like the number. You actually yeah. have to look up what the names are. I think you can find the names on Amazon. Uh, maybe on Lovecrafts. Right. Or um, what's it called? The place, the um, Jimmy Bean Yarn. Did they right. also buy, buy uh, the other yarn place? Didn't you tell me that, that Jimmy Bean bought... Uh, they bought... Um, what was it? The one Mad Tosh. That's right. You told yeah, me about Mad Tosh. Mm -hmm. I knew you told me they bought somebody. Let me see here. This means that I can pro should probably keep an eye on them for all my Mad Tosh drooling needs. Right. Or nuance. I don't know what this is. Maybe your pattern? No, this is something different. This has got knit fronts and backs and so this might be a shawl or something. oh this is my shawl okay oh you must have had your shawl designed must have there. my shawl in there with last time okay so that's all i have to say about this oh good that you you uh waffled enough for me to get almost to the end of this row just to finish a few stitches and then i'll be able to actually show this without it being in the middle of the row so that was delightful thank you mm. so in my there last stitch I actually had lost my little notebook that had all the information in it, and I had to figure out where I was in the pattern again. I have no idea where that notebook walked away to. Uh, 
Uh, this is one of the soft uh, Knitter's Magic bags. The brown with pink flowers. Even though I'm not a pink girl, I've always liked the look yeah. of brown and pink together. And that's kind of a, not a pink pink. It's, I mean, it is pink, but it's, you know, not like candy candy pink. It's the kind of pink that generally looks good with brown. Yeah. So, um, sure. this is my, make sure I move my marker correctly. Yes, there we go. Comfort yourself with your music pattern and the project is called Canary Song. This uh, pattern comes from Little Women Knits by Joanna Johnson. Uh -huh. I've been wanting to work on this all week and this is the yesterday was the first time I got a chance to work on it because I kept having trouble focusing and I got distracted. So and like I said this is sideways so this is just one of the armholes. She calls it a blanket sweater. Um, I really like the construction of that. Yeah. So, I had to keep knitting for in pattern for quite a while before the next armhole, and then I can worry about the sleeves. You could almost wear that as a long vest. Yeah, you could. You could because you don't have to you just do the sleeves off. if yeah. you truly didn't want to. Uh, you would Kitchener or something because yeah. these are live stitches. Right. I don't know how to. Kitchener. Oh, I'm sorry. You went Kitchener. I, I I apologize. You would bind off. You would just have to bind off when you got to that point. Would you do a three needle bind off? No, I believe three needle will also close it. That's why I oh, said okay. no Kitchener. You would have to, when you get to this point, instead of holding these stitches live, you would have to pick them up. bind them off at that point. Yeah. But how would you do that? You have to pick them up and then. No, them, right? when you when you're knit when you when you're at that point. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Instead of, you know, you couldn't decide. You can't do like an afterthought decision. You had to plan it as a vest. Right, right, right. Because you <laughs> said, oh, I'd rather not do the sleeves after all. Yeah. But be kind of a pretty. Um, long duster kind of vest but just be kind of common in the 70s that is that thus far I'm going to just move this over here let me just finish this row here because I want to be in the middle because I can't put it in the middle of the um, the, the uh, cord if I don't finish it also in squash blossom I might have a slight squash blossom thing obsession although that's no surprise this no. has been a yarn that I've worked in projects for eons yeah. usually in color work we have our favorite stuff yeah i'm it's just glad to have a sweater in it because now then I, what i can do if i really want to is wear that sweater with this shawl mm -hmm. and with the hat that matches this be kind of a lot of layering yeah but i have to do layering a mm -hmm. lot of times i've worn sh uh, shawls and sweaters together frequently well, i've done that as well not frequently, but I've done it when it's, you know, especially if it's, we're in the house and it kind of temperature changes for whatever reason. Well, I have really bad issues with temperature fluctuation where sometimes I'll get so cold that nothing warms me up. So right. I'm like layering knit after knit okay. and then I'll be, you know, overheated later when I wake up from nap or whatever and have to peel all the layers off. I'm almost done with this row here. I just didn't, because I can't find my other needle minder at the moment, I want to make sure I'm not in the middle of a row for this. So I can just do this. Mm. Okay. All right, let me see here. Put this away. This is the row that never ends. Mm -hmm. And it goes on and on, my friend. Ain't no friend live. Okay, that takes care of that. Um, that is my... I have to keep track of what I'm doing here. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. In my Knitter's Magic Owl Bag is the Not a Cozy Memories Blanket Project. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I have to get a drink. I, you know you get a crumb sometimes stuck? Mm-hmm. Not a Cozy Memories Blanket Project from the Crochet Granny Square Tutorial program, uh, Pattern Tutorial by KF Joan, Jones. And this is the other bag I was telling you about. It's not soft. It is in this magic bag. I absolutely love it. And this, she doesn't put her name on it. It's got pockets and everything inside of it. It's a nice little bucket bag. It's a nice little bucket bag. Um, and I don't <coughs> remember working too much on this. I must have worked on it during the podcast. Because this is what I'm working on. It hasn't gone anywhere since. <coughs> so I have to say about that. It has... <coughs> Sorry, guys. <coughs> Unless you would cough. Or, but <laughs> I don't know what to say to cough. Um... 
this is um, various yarns. I think this one is a Malabrigo, actually. That's now, are you going to be putting them together as you go? Not at the moment. <laughs> I probably should. I'm probably going to regret it if I don't. Mm -hmm. But I'm not at the moment. <coughs> I even have to go. I can't talk uh -huh. anymore. Um, mm. In my... Mm -hmm. Silvershed USA kitties in a news bag. Let me find the opposite side where some of the news stories are that I don't haven't read before. Alrighty, let's see. <coughs> oh, here we go. <coughs> Alrighty, so. Oil prices surge, but South Short Hair cashes in. By Ollie Oriental. Prices at the pumps reach an all-time high today, but no one is suffering who purchased an electric racer from Flying Feline and Company. The fast-moving compact is a new favorite among all breeds when it comes to travel these days. Sal showed left at a massage, just got his ASPCA approval on his newest venture, the Curiosity 707, an economic electric jet plane that promises not to kill the cat. <laughs> Satisfaction guaranteed. So, that little news story right there. And this is my Lake of Shining Waters project. The pattern is the Ann sweater from Green Gables Knits by Joanna Johnson. Using the Andean Treasure yarn in the Sapphire Heather colorway. That's a really pretty colorway. It is. And it's a really nice yarn. So, right now it just looks like a short vest. A bolero. Yep. Um, so just slowly making my way. That's what I was thinking too, but that's not what he says though. What does he actually say? Working my way back. Oh, he does say working my way, not making my way? Oh, okay. It, then I've been remembering that song wrong all the time. I bet a lot of people remember it wrong. Uh, I think a lot of times when you hear something on the radio or whatever, you, you're just kind of getting the gist of the words. Mm -hmm. And so you don't always get the correct, you know verbiage if you will okay let me finish this corner and I not will that i ever heard it on the radio i would have heard it like daddy stuff yeah my husband puts together playlists and things so we have all this neat and music who did stuff. that song anyways temptation <sighs> i know to me and i had cds i'm not sure it's motown i think it is motown it might have been from we had this huge motown collection mm -hmm. so it was probably from there I think it's Motown. It sounds like Motown. Every day. Yeah. I feel like it's Temptations. It I, it's be. not the Miracles. No. It it's doesn't sound like Smokey. smoky. No, mm -mm. It's uh, too low for Smokey. Yeah. I'm pretty it's, sure it's, it's something it, like the Temptations. Yeah, it's either the Temptations or it could be the Stylistics. You know. It could be the Stylistics. Um, you know, I don't know. Because um, it's one of the guy bands. Yeah. Okay. Moving along. Mm -hmm. And now I have the crumb. <laughs> it's really annoying, isn't it? In my knitter's mat, I just did that one. In my Cloverbird pink and purple teacups bag is my third uh, scrap shawl. It's the comfy, comfy cozy shawl from the scrap shawl pattern by Anastasia Zatel. And I'm using Miss Babs yarn for this. I didn't do a whole lot on this either. I took this with me to do when I was waiting, but I didn't get anything done. So. I did a little bit on the podcast, I think, last week. Tangled up here. But it's surprised that you don't have more done because that's such all you really enjoy working. Well, I've been doing a lot of different things, just no focus. Mm hmm Well, sometimes something you've been working on for a while just doesn't catch your fancy. Yeah, and this like this all Miss Babs, different greens and blues is definitely my colors. It's not like you really had a break from that shawl. You've got started one after another after another. Had several, some of them go, most of them going concurrently. Well, I had a little bit of a break. You had that going concurrently with mine. No, I had. Did you start? I had um, crystals concurrently with yours. Oh, okay. I thought you had three going concurrently. No, this one I, I started after I finished yours. Oh, okay. So, alrighty. So me. Also me. 
in my silver shed. I never taught you to lie. That's why you're so bad at it. <laughs> That's a def definite reference. Yeah, I don't remember that reference. Yeah. Silver Shed USA bat signal bag. This is Puget Sound, the fundamental men's pullover. Excuse me. And it's something Hagen. Jen, Jen Hagen. Jen Hagen, who is the designer. Yep, Jen Hagen. I it's, just want to say Jean, but it's Jen. Um, it's knit flat. I'm almost at the point where I have to uh, decrease for the armholes. Um, and then once I do that, it won't be too much more knitting before I start the front, probably. Excellent. Um, this is something to be knit on, you know, when you don't need any brain power. The only reason why this hasn't got more love than it used to is because I knew I was getting close to the point where I'd have to think about, um, where's my thing that I had this clipped off with? Um, what are you talking about, sweetheart? I had this clipped off with something. I, oh, that's right. I did it on either end. Oh. Um, need a winder. Yes. <clears throat> I'm, I have been like at an inch away from where I need to be, it seems, forever. So it's I the inch that never it's, ends. It's not a project I can work on mm -hmm. if I don't have the ability to measure mm -hmm. at that time. So that's why this has really not gotten the love it had in the past. Once I get to starting a new section it won't matter I can just go back to knitting I think part of the reason I have um, so little progress on things is that right now it's important to have a lot of projects <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> you know? um, I think if it becomes important for me to finish a few things you're gonna see a lot fewer projects uh -huh. while I focus on things but right now I just your, your focus right now is on numbers right right now I'm a I'm a process knitter not a process knitter. you're a numbers knitter I'm a numbers knitter I'm an NK Numbers knitter with a capital K. But crochet. Yes. And Casey? And Casey. She just perked her ears up. So that's not right. <laughs> and for those of you who are new to the podcast, MP Casey is this little kitty here. And mm. she's very persnickety when she wants to be. It's MP Casey C stands for Miss Peppermint Kitty Cat. Yes, Miss Peppermint Kitty Cat, if you please. So we just call her MP Casey for short. Which she does not like. She hates it. Okay, so it's your turn. Oh, okay. Let me just get this held up because unlike knitting where you can just sit on the needles, if I'm not careful, I will lose my stitches. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Alrighty then. I was impressed in the comments on YouTube about the people, one lady I who know. could crochet in the dark. Uh -huh. I'm just sitting here like, okay, that's impressive. And without looking and all that. Did you, did you see the one? I think it was Steph who posted in the group about, um, how people who are blind learn to crochet by feel. And I thought that's really impressive. Well, I I think this might be a false memory, but I feel like I do remember this. Yeah, I either had a patient or I heard someone tell me about a patient, elderly patient, who was still able to knit even though she couldn't see because she lost her eyesight gradually. Mm -hmm. And she had the muscle memory still, so she, she just kept knitting. She just did it by feel. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's awesome. That's amazing. Especially when I mean, well, she wasn't able to do anything complex. No, but she was able to keep in yeah. maybe do baby blankets or whatever yeah. that were, or maybe even a hat that's going round and round. She knows when to decrease and all that, you know? That's cool. That's, I always I always have a great admiration for people who are able to um, work around stuff. Work around their, limit, their limitations, you know? Work around com complicated challenges. factors. Chal challenges. <laughs> yes, challenges. Yeah, that, I just think that's absolutely amazing. Let me put this away so I get my other project out. Okay. Um, my next one is the Bags and Wrap project from the Burr Wrap Pattern by KF Jones. And it's in my Mar Mama C's Large Owl Bag. I love this. I love this bag. It makes me so happy. So thank you, Christina. I don't do a lot of this either. For some reason, I got a lot done during the podcast. I would do whatever I did, and then I wouldn't come back to it. Because mm -hmm. um, well, you, you've been in a mood to add more projects, so working on something you worked on during the podcast probably didn't make much sense to no. you because that wouldn't add more projects. No. And I'm in the middle of a row here. I never know how many projects I have until I add them up on the next day, simply right. because I just work whatever I feel like working on. I have on the top of my a running total well i put the running total at the end i have my notebook mm -hmm. uh what i'm doing just because 
that's what the way I'm keeping track of it right now. So I'm still on this colorway and I still have a few rows to go, but I'm having fun with this. This is one of those patterns where you just kind of say, okay, I can take it easy, take it slow. I'm enjoying it. I really don't care when it's finished. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I want it to be finished, obviously, but I don't care if it's done. It's more about the knit. It's, this is definitely a, a process. I'm not overly concerned about uh, the project itself. And when I, when I get it, I'll love wearing it. But right now I'm just enjoying the process, mm -hmm. which is nice. Yeah, it is. It's always important to have those kind of projects. Yes. Okay. Now the next pattern is only exists because I frogged stuff. Um, in my color. All right. Here. Not this one. This one. Come here. Come here. Come here. Big one. Which I think it might be the other one. Sorry. Oh, I just couldn't remember what bag it was in. Uh, sorry, my watch is grabbing stuff. Okay. In my... Yeah, this is the right one. Red bag from China? I don't know what these are called. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't have a tag. No. I have a, a teal one that's... It was my purse okay. for a while, but I had to carry too much medical stuff, so eventually I switched over to my... Um, Wheelchair bag. To my wheelchair bag, and I just carry that. Okay, so this is the Ember's Cardigan project. The pattern is the Calligraphy Cardigan by Hannah Fettig. Now, if you guys remember, a while back I tried to cast this on with a black yarn uh, because I really liked the cardigan that Amy from uh, Round the tw No, it was no, uh, Knitting in Circles. Knitting in Circles, yeah. I always mix up their names. Um, Amy from Knitting Circles had knit. She was showing, I guess, the sweaters that she had knit. This is a long time ago. Um, but at that point, I started ha losing my interest in sweaters. My fatigue was getting worse. And so any sweaters I had at that time pretty much got ripped. Right. Um, and this was a, fort a fortunate one, too. Now, I decided that, well, I told you last time I was going to rip probably the Dobbin wood that I had in this yarn, this, um is the hold on I have the tag. It's Miss Babs. It is Miss Babs. It's called Wanna Go Crazy. Mm -hmm. And I picked up a sweater's worth because that's what I did at that point. I only picked up sweaters worth. Um and I ripped out the Dobbin wood that had this in it because I was like I I'm not gonna wear the Dobbin wood in this color. I have a shawl that I love that's a similar color for mom's. If it comes down to choosing between the two, I'm gonna choose mom's shawl. So why even finish this? Even though you know I had the first you know flap almost done and could just start on the second one. Yeah, I was, it's not like she doesn't like it. She just had one already. Yeah, I just didn't see the point of having something that was almost exactly the same color or very similar in feel color. So I ripped it out and I. Notice I almost had enough for the sweater I wanted to knit. And then I remembered in the same color, I had knit the Yowza 2. Mm -hmm. Yowza Way at Shawl 2. Which I hardly ever wear because it's kind of an odd shape. Yeah. Um, it's a pretty shawl. It's just not one I wear a lot. So I went ahead and I ripped that and got a whole other skinny yarn out of it. And then it gave me enough to start the sweater. So... Yay for repurposing. Yes, yay for, yeah, and I had finished that shawl like 2016. Yeah. <laughs> but it is now going to be a part of this sweater. And I really love, I think I'm going to really enjoy this sweater. Mm -hmm. I don't have anything quite this color. It's in, it's a red, but it's also got the oranges in it. So the sleeves look like they'll be a little bit looser too. It looks like it's like a comfy sweater, which is nice because my other orange sweater is a bit tight in the sleeves. It's just more of a tapered sleeve. Mm -hmm. So if I'm just feeling like I don't want anything too constricting, this might be a better choice. Yeah, I, I like sweaters that you can pull up past your elbows. Yeah, Every, I mean, because I can pull up the sleeves on the other one. It's just that sometimes I just feel, if I have a sweater that's too tight, I just feel too constricted. And mm -hmm. I just want it something that's loose. Right. So I think this is going to be a little looser. Just get a couple more stitches on here. So, because uh, what I absolutely needed was another sweater on the needles. Yep. That gives me four, I think. Yep. We got. We tend to go on waves of things. We well, have a lot of the toys. The thing lot is, of I used to be a sweater knitter. Mm -hmm. That was like all I knit. I think I, I'm a little more eclectic. Although for a while I was doing a lot of toys. Yeah. Uh, crochet toys, but right now I don't want to do anything. Like, like I don't want to do anything that requires me to do faces. 
I don't mm -hmm. care. I don't care if they're uh, knit faces, you know, knit on faces, embroidered, push, uh, you know, safety but, eyes. Yeah. I don't care. I just don't want to. You do don't it. want it to look at you. No, don't want it right now. I mean, I, and that may change because mm -hmm. I had the inkling to maybe start another, the urge to start another toy. <laughs> you probably should finish the ones you have. But I don't want to do those right now. <laughs> I want to do something else. And Brittany told me I should do what I want to do. Oh, okay. Well, Brittany says this. Yeah. Brittany said that. So she can take the hit. You shouldn't hit Brittany. I'm going to hit Brittany. Let me see here. Okay, let me put this away. Our poor people have been with us forever. Get picked on. Picked on. <laughs> okay. Um, and sometimes if I remember your comment but, and don't remember your name, I'll refer to your comment even if I don't remember your name. Like the wonderful lady who's able to knit. Mm hmm. I was on it, crochet without looking in the dark. Was that Kara? I don't remember. I think it was Kara. And I'm not sure if her name is pronounced Kara or Kara. It's spelled with a K. You see, the the girl I knew whose name was spelled with a K like that is was Kara. That's mm -hmm. what we called her at work, and that's what she responded to. Well, so whatever, you can tell us if you see this podcast whether or not it's you how to pronounce that so we don't do it wrong. Yeah. Okay, my next one is... In my knitters, my bag, Monet syrup bag, and this is my. Did storm you say knitters, my bag? What? It's knitting's my bag, not knitters, my bag. Okay, whatever. <laughs> I can't be bothered with trivialities. Okay. <laughs> no, knitting's my bag. Um, stormy weather. Is she even? She's done. She doesn't sell bags anymore. Right? I don't think she does. Um, she was really popular for a while there, but she got um, a lot. So many orders, she would get overwhelmed sometimes. Yeah, I would imagine so. Mm -hmm. The Stormy Weather Sweater Project from the Fundamental Woman's Pullover Pattern by Jean H Jen Hagen Designs. And this was on Lovecraft. And I didn't do a whole lot on this. I i don't remember working this. I'm wondering if I didn't work on this because I think it was at the same place where I finished the ribbing. And I was going to um, ask you to help me. Not help me, but show me where I should what I should do with it. Where is my What bag? do you mean, show you what I should, what you should do with it? Um, I just, I'll, I'll ask you the question when I can think about what it was. I think, I don't think I've done anything on this. I think I finished this and just forgot to put it off. Took it off the list. Because I didn't do anything else, I don't think. I must have just missed it. So, I'm not going to really show it to you. It's then well, I mean, you did show it. <laughs> well, not really. I kind of went, <laughs> you know. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, next for me is, this was... Everything from here on is new project because apparently I needed to start four new projects. Mm. Like I needed a, another hole in my head, but you know. Um, in my other soft Knitter's Magic bag, this is the brown soft one, is, okay, so what happened was I, I wear, I'm going to put this on so you guys know what I'm talking about. Oh, excuse me. This is my Thorin's cowl. I did in this color just because this is what... I've had this for a while. I didn't know what else I was going to do with this yarn. And I honestly didn't think I was going to wear it that much. I wear this, and I'm going to actually keep it on. That feels good. Um, I wear this to block light. It helps. And if I'm really having a bad day, I'll wear it down to here. <laughs> um, this is one of my migraine protection uh, methods. This is the Thorin's cowl. The pattern also gives the option of like a tassel on the back here. Um, you can also make, they have directions if you want to make the hood a little deeper. I think next time I make one for me, I'll make the hood a little deeper. So that way, if I really wanted to, I could really pull mm -hmm. it down. And if I don't, I just have this, you know. And Thorin is a Hobbit reference. Yes, he's the leader of the dwarves in The Hobbit. Um, he's the only one who I actually don't mind the way they cast mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. I what liked, I didn't, me. was it Balin? Balin? Balin was, was cast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But for the most part, it was kind of a... Uh. Uh, for the most part, I kind of felt like having all the dwarves be hot was kind of an odd choice. Um, but well, I Bomber thought, wasn't. Bomber wasn't. <laughs> um, but, and I guess there were some that were goofy. It just kind of felt like their casting felt well, weird. Well, it was the focus on. The, uh, the, the, we won't get into that right now. Yeah, but anyway, I thought Thorin was a good casting choice. And this is a Thorin's hood. His hood is actually blue. Mm -hmm. And I came very close to casting on another, another one in Zing. But I end up, I'm going to go with a different color for me. But in here is, Davina saw me wearing this, and she decided she really wanted one. I let her choose yarn. She wanted to choose zing as soon as she saw it out. Later, I didn't make that an option. I'm like, no, sorry, you're not getting zing. <laughs> choose something else. <laughs> um, good thing about this pattern is they have several options. There's all a, one option where you can do a fishnet lace during part of it. I didn't do that with mine. 
but I'm doing that with Davina's Venus because her yarn is plainer. It's got variegation, but it's not like... Um, it's got depth. It's got depth, but it's not got a lot going on otherwise. And to keep interest going, I have a fishnet lace, which kind of works for the color. I'm calling this the Courtly Love um, hood. I'm sorry, the hood of Courtly Love. Um, and it's in the colorway, Courtly Love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I thought. This is Mom's Colors. Here's the one I'm working with. And this was from that... Um, it was one of the colors for the kit. It was one of the colors for the kit. I'm thinking also when I'm done, I, I should have enough yarn to design a uh, pair of fingerless mitts that can kind of go with this. She'd love Davina. that. Oh, she'd absolutely love it. So, um, <clears throat> and just kind of make it match a little bit, have a kind of same feel. And then she'd have her pink self. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the most unsneaky... <laughs> Of all, of all dwarves. Of all dwarves. <laughs> um, I do think one of them, one of them had yellow. I want to say that maybe. I thought it was Feely or Keely. I, I thought one. Bomber did, but maybe he, he was Maybe Bomber? Um, Bomber doesn't sound like a yellow. I can't remember who had yellow. One of them had yellow, canary yellow. Because mm -hmm. um, I considered making canary yellow one for me before I decided to do the sweater instead. I know that the thorns was blue with a silver lining. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, that reminds me. Thorin's colors are good colors. <laughs> I chose to go with, for me, my second one. It's a little bit darker to kind of block the light a bit better. This one, when I'm done with the That's Venus. really pretty. So, That's this Berlin. is Berlin, I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure. Yeah, Berlin. Um, I always like that color. But, Davina's is fun. It's um, very Davina. It's, I hadn't quite realized how pink this color is. For some reason, I always thought it was more of a red. Mm -hmm. But until I started knitting with them, I'm like, yeah, this is more of a pink. It's, I'm glad I'm knitting it for something for Davina because I don't wear a lot of pink. Mm -hmm. um, okay, and I also apparently wanted to start things. Um, this is the Woodland Shawl Project from the Walking Town pattern. Found an Eminence collection. Good, I'm collection. glad you did start that. This is in my awesome Granny Firefly bag. And I did a bit of work on it, and then I had to put it aside. So this is... Um, you remember just started with the small needles, right? Yes. Okay. Tempting you... Yarn, you so decan sparkly, and this is the chocolate truffle colorway. Oh, so, so I made. I didn't get a whole lot of progress, but I did start it. Once you get going, this project's very addictive. Yeah, I love the color. It's a brown, but it's got some kind of like, I don't know, like a purple kind of, maybe or something. It's got chocolate and kind of a. It's got just brown. different ranges of. of it's brown. absolutely it beautiful. Looks, it makes you think of chocolate. And the sparkle is very gentle. It's a gold sparkle, not a silver sparkle. Oh, I like when there's a gold sparkle. In well, there. this, I think it's a gold sparkle. Maybe not. I can't tell. Mm -hmm. It looks like there's some gold to it. I don't know. It's hard to. I think if it's not, I think that the brown gives a, a reflection off the um, sparkle. I had three skeins of this, so I hope I have enough. You should. And uh, I really like this. I think this is gonna be fun. This can be so pretty, and you can and you wear a lot of brownish kind of colors. Mm -hmm. Okay, so next uh, cast on. This is one that I had talked about cast on last time because when I talked about pulling out my Dobbin wood, so I could start mom's Dobbin wood. So this is mom's Dobbin wood. This is Ink Heart. The Dobbin one's by KF Jones, and I'm not very far along because <sighs> at the beginning, a little bit chill there. Mm -hmm. At the beginning, the rows are kind of on the long end. Um, until you start getting, until you get to the um, flap things, it's pretty long in the back, just because it's almost like a blanket. But here's Mom's. She has hers in Inkwell, the main part of it, and then where I have black, she has Zing, um, and then where I have white, she has this light blue. Because that's not my colors at so all. So it's going to be really pretty. Even though it's blue like mine is, it's going to be very different than mine. Uh, whereas mine is definitely a TARDIS feel. Mm -hmm. Or Nightwing. <laughs> or Nightwing. Yeah, I guess I thought TARDIS first, but you're right. It could work for Nightwing. Um, that way, that's what I thought of when I first saw it. I think because it was in my TARDIS bag, and this has been my Dobbinwood bag for so long, mm -hmm. I think it'll be confused when it doesn't carry Dobbinwood in anymore. It'll wonder what happened. What happened? Um... And I'm using my zings to knit with it. <sighs> and I think that it's funny. The zings match the... Oh, <laughs> I just pulled me that. Yeah, that's good. Excellent. It matches. 
Matchy, matchy. matchy. Your turn. Okay, um, this one didn't make my show notes. I wasn't sure I was going to say anything, except I have to show uh, something that's an acquisition later on, so we're going to see it anyway. In my Silver Shade USA Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle bag is my, um, well, I don't know what they call it, the Thorn. Oh, Thorn's Cow. Okay, no. good. So you did I, start. I started it. I only got one. I only got the cast on done. So. Oh, yours is going to be red. That's mm -hmm. great. Oh, Mom, that's going to be beautiful. So this is. Did the, you do version two? What? Which version are I'm you? I'm going to do version two, yeah. Yeah. The, the Thorn's Cow gives you four versions to go with. I'm doing version four for Davina. This one's version two. And then also later on, they give you how you li can link. Uh, deep in the hood if you want to. Right. Now this one, I'm only concerned about twisting the stitches, which is why I haven't done it yet because I haven't had the brain space after I started it because of the shots and everything. So, right. And so this, I'm hoping to get started on this relatively quickly. Oh, that's going to be so pretty, Mom. Yeah, I thought it would. I mean, oh. I, I didn't know what I was going to do with this. and this just Little Red Riding Hood is what you better call that. I forget what I was going to call it. Um, that's Little Red Riding Hood. Maybe. There is one of the, uh, you should read The Hobbit. One of them has red. I forget which one it is. One of them has red. I can't remember who it is. I don't like the person. I'm not going to name it after him. <laughs> you mean if it's Bomber, you're not going to do it? I like Bomber. He's cute. <laughs> well, which one don't you like? I don't know. I mean, I just have to see what it says. But anyway, I have to get this flattened out and look at Kay's tutorial so I don't twist it because I've been known to twist. Too bad it's not like, I'm pretty sure that it's not, um last uh it might be Balin do you think Balin has red it might be Balin you it, think I like Balin I like Balin but I I, have, I had like this feeling that he might not be red I don't know so anyway I just just barely started this um I was casting on we're watching a movie or something and I just didn't want trust myself not to twist the stitches if I wasn't paying attention because I twist the stitches when I am paying attention right <laughs> so uh -huh. I knew you'd be excited about the about the color choice yeah so Okay, do you have uh, another one? Do you have finished objects? I or? do have another one. Okay. I just wanted to quickly... I'll be right back. Mom, you're right. Oh, no, it's Balin. That's what I said. Yeah, Balin's red, Mom. Balin's cow. Balin's oh, cool. wow, that's great. I like Balin. I'll be right back. Oh. Biffer and Boffer are yellow. Biffer and Boffer? Yeah. Okay, because this is obviously important to me. Let's run through the color hoods. So, Dwaylin, he's a blue beard, <laughs> dark green hood. Balin, white beard, scarlet hood. Feely Keely, yellow beards, blue hoods. Dory Nori, oin and gloin. So there's purple hood, two purple hoods, a gray hood, a brown hood, and white hood. Biffer and Boffer are yellow. Bomber is pale green. Thorn has sky blue with a silver tassel. Okay, very cool. Okay, that was in case you guys needed to know that. Um, now I need to go back to focusing on my next project. I also ripped out something else to get this project. Mom needed her candy corn yarn knit up. So I had some already saved for Davina. I went ahead and ripped out my Davina's hat I had going for myself simply because I wasn't working on it. I was using some other yarn of mom's. And so I ripped that out so I could start this one. Um, so this is a Davina's hat for Davina. Um, and it is in mom's candy corn colorway. And it works up quite fun. Now it's had quite a bit of work on it because I wanted mom to be able to show the person who was interested how it works up. And so you could see how it works up in seed stitch, in ribbing, and in um, just stockinette. And it does this fun little spiral thing. So I'm calling this candy corn head. Um, and yeah, so this has been fun. I realize I have quite a theme of like yellows going on here. So... I think she's coming back. That is that, and it's in my, um, gosh, I forget who does this bag. Oh, that's, um, 
Is there a tag on the inside? Yeah. Um, star knits. Yes, star knits. <laughs> um, and this is my Archie bag. So that got quite a bit of work on it. Was that? Uh, that was the uh, candy corn head. Oh, right. Candy corn head? <laughs> yeah. So, Mom, um, apparently Dwaylin has a blue beard. Has With a his blue dark, beard? Dark green hood. Yeah. Oh, okay. A blue uh, beard? He's a pirate? I guess so. <laughs> Everyone else has normal color beards. Um, and the, Maybe and he likes to eat blueberries. Feely and Keely's are, are blondes. Uh -huh. And they have the blue hoods. Um, whereas Thorn has a sky blue right. one. So the blue eye. Yeah. So mine would have been too bright anyway. It would have been more like Feely and Keely. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm so happy. Yours, Balin has a white beard and scarlet hood. Yeah. That is so cool. Balin's the best. He is. He's, he's wise. Yeah. Well, he was always my favorite. <laughs> when Bobo <laughs> snuck into the camp when he was uh, watching, and later on when he finds out about the ring, he's laughing to himself about how uh, Bilbo managed to convince everyone that he just snuck past Balin. <laughs> Balin always kept an eye out for Bilbo, yeah, too. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Okay, do you have any FOs? Um, I do not. I and I either. told about all my uh, frogs. Okay. Because they all led to other projects. Okay. Uh, that leads see. us on to do you have any graphic novel? No. Do you have Beats and String? I do. Let me get out of my dwarf hood list and get back to my show notes. You need to make sure you write down that's Balance Hood because yeah. how awesome is that? Yeah. He's my favorite. Um. Scrolling down to my. Yes, so Beads and String is actually where I can reach it. Some of it is at, in the mail right now because there were orders that I finally finished and got out. You saw them most in last week. The John Paul II rosary order, that's in the mail. The mental health rosary order, that's in the mail. And I've now found a way to get that particular cord, even though it's not as heavy duty as the pair cord I'm getting now. People like that cord and it seems to be lasting for them. So, <laughs> but, go ahead, I'll explain this later. So I'm at least holding on to that. I have some of that cord coming in just for that rosary if people want it. I am very talented. What did you do? Okay, there we go. Is it a tail? Okay. I thought I um, crocheted that one to get oh. to it. Oh. Um, then I had the wood sacrifice beads with the navy cord in the mail. Mm -hmm. um, I did finish another order. And that is... Here it is. Well, I had it packaged differently on the other side. Remember, it was in order. These are the sacrifice beads, the acid purple oh, right. cord. Oh, isn't that pretty? So, um, I now have two purples. I have one that's just purple and one that's acid purple. They're just a slightly different feel to them. I have, And I'll show the some of the colors I just picked up when it gets to acquisitions. And my left notes are a little annoying right now. Okay. Then um, I also finished Padre Pio Rosary. This one is like, you can beat someone with this. <laughs> it's heavy. <clears throat> it's got. I'm, I'm using my thicker paracord for this. I have a 90 pound tensile strength one. It can handle like 90 pounds. This one can handle 95 because this particular centerpiece, this centerpiece and the same dimpness centerpiece can both handle a thicker cord. Most of my centerpieces do need the thinner one, the 90 pound one. But this one can actually handle the 95 pound one. And I feel like it's kind of appropriate for Padre Pio. I could see using the, um, a couple of other colors that I have for his as well. This is going up in the shop. I've been meaning to put this up in a, for a while. Oh, it's been done for a while? Yeah, I, um, well, I finished, I only finished, like, cutting off extra cords recently, but right. be, I got behind with orders and not feeling quite right, and I never got around to actually doing the last finishing touches, so I couldn't put it up in the shop. But now it's finally done. It's like I'll have a stretch where I have no orders, but then I'll have a stretch where, like, every, like, every time I turn around, there's an order. Right. Um, then, oh, Davina's Lily of the Mohawks. Norm, I will have eventually a wood bead version, but this is for Davina. She doesn't like wood beads, and I think that 
maybe my Kateri tickle with the centerpiece might be able to handle it with thicker cord. Possibly It'd be a bit of a tight thing. I probably wouldn't do it though because the crucifix couldn't handle it. Right. Nor could the Our Father be attached to Too small. Too small. Mm -hmm. So there we go. Uh -huh. It's got little flower beads. This will be a uh, birthday gift. Um, because I doubt they'll be finished with her hat in time for that. She was happy when you did uh, that, start on that. And I definitely won't be done with her hood. <laughs> no. <laughs> Even though I worked on, work on a lot, it takes a while. Right. Um, let's see. That was a surprise order from her. She really wanted that. The hood? Yes, because she, she broached that topic. She really likes this hood. Um... She actually kind of surprised me. Then, oh yeah, this is my, oh, this is actually your Holy Family Rosary. Oh, okay. So I had to just record mom's thing because she didn't have the paracord. This is a, a 90 pound paracord, which means that it can handle supposedly 90 pounds of tensile I guess tensile strength or whatever, tensile weight. I don't know. I don't know. It, is. it can handle 90 pounds of tension. <clears throat> so, hopefully it can hold up to mom. It should be able to. I'm not that hard on my rosaries. I tried to add a little bit of space between the beads, too, so she's not ripping on them. Yeah, because I tend to pull the beads a little bit, especially um, at the beginning. So, so, I tried to make enough room Thank there. You. My pretty rosary. Uh -huh. And then this is one for Mother's Day that'll go up in the shop. Um, it'll probably be on sale, particularly for Mother's Day, so I need to take pictures pretty soon. Yeah, ASAP. Um, yes, I call this Blessed Among Women, and it's got a mother and child centerpiece. Very pretty. Rose are father beads, and the um, crucifix that I tend to use a lot of, the Tibetan one. Um, it's similar in some ways to the Lily of the Mohawks in style, but you can see the difference between the two pinks. This one's neon pink. That's more of a salmon. And this one's more a different kind of pink. I don't have any more the really light baby pink. Do you? Will you make that one available for uh, with blues? Oh yeah, this will have just about all the colors I have available. Because it would be really pretty to do um, Mother's Day from you know like a Marian kind yeah, of yeah. People can choose whatever color they want for because I do special orders. Mm -hmm. Most of my things are special order. Very rarely do I have one that people just want one I already have in stock. Right. Uh -huh. And then this is I wanted to try with my new cord before I realized I could pick up some of the old one. I have several other multicolored cord options for. Whoopsie, hold on. Um. Sorry, beads are like trying to come out all over the place. For the uh, mental health rosary. So this is the hippie cord. <laughs> um, Groovy. It's a little bit more multicolor than the one I was using. So it gave us a bit of a different feel. And this is the 95 pound one. Um, so this one's really sturdy. Um, just give another option to people. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many multicolor cords I'll sell outside of the original. You know, there's multicolor mm -hmm. cords I'll, I'll sell outside the original one, but it gives options mm -hmm. that is in a stronger cord. Like I said, no one's reported any issues with theirs. People don't tend to sleep with a rosary quite that big, I don't mm -hmm. think. Well, I do. I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, but maybe most people don't. I know Davina hangs hers up. And mm -hmm. Davina stays in really good shape. Mm -hmm. um, because she takes good care of it. But yeah, that is all the rosary stuff. This one's in progress. And then the finished ones. I need to take pictures of uh, the new finished ones for the shop. Mm -hmm. Do you need to take a picture of this one? No, I've ha I already have that one listed. Um, because remember, I uh, someone we know purchased it for right. her husband. Right. She he almost actually it was like almost the exact same one. I think that he liked the same cord you do, mm -hmm. or she thought he liked the same Good cord. Good taste. Yes. So, 
Yes. Um, that's it for beads and string. That leads us on to stash enhancements. Okay. I'm going to let you go first because then I can try to finish this row. All right. Let me just put this stitch on hold. Not to mention I've been talking a while about beads and string. Okay. Do have some stash enhancements. Um, you saw my uh, balance hood. This. I have a set of about a size 10 US 10s for that. Oh, this isn't it. Um, this is it. Because you didn't have any 10s. I didn't have any US 10s on 24 inch uh, cord. So these are new. These are chow goos. Red lace circulars. So well, I'm doing mine, I think, on zings. Can't remember. Yeah, pro zings. So I that, think they are, but they might not. They might be on the chow because I think they're actually on the same. They might be the same interchangeable already from the last time I knit this one. Right. Because I don't use tens that often. And when I got those, I also got a pair of sevens. This is going to go in with my um, with my um, shawl from the Emma Knits. I found that I kind of equally like Chow Goose and the Knit Pro Zings. I, yeah, I don't just like the Zings. the Chow Goose, I like when I don't need to do anything where I need to magic loop or anything. Mm -hmm. But if I think I'm going to need to magic loop, I'd rather have the Zings. Or if I think I'm going to have to... Uh, worry about needle sizes, like changing, worry about what needle size I'm wearing, using, and I just want to look at color. Mm. Right. Uh, but the cord is, for the zing is really nice for magic loop. It's a little more flexible. My still, I'm still, uh, my favorite is still Chow Goose, but very close second are the Knit Pro Zings. And when I ordered the uh, Chow Goose, I also ordered a, a uh, what is it called? Um, you know, so you can tell what size the needles are, and you could do a ga knitting gauge and all that. Oh, and it's a see, set of five. Yeah. It was really inexpensive, a set of five of them. Oh, that's nice. I've so. not seen one quite like this, because mm -hmm. the ones I've seen have been more square, the ones that come from, um, they're metal. Yeah, I don't like those. I can't remember who, they, Susan Bates does Yeah, those. they bend. Yes, I, they do bend. I saw a plastic set like that, but this one came in a set of five. And I prefer either plastic or metal to the wood ones, because the mm -hmm. wood ones, I'm afraid, could warp. Or they can, uh, I think they're also very likely to maybe, if unless they're burned on it might be easy to lose the information information mm -hmm. i think but it's burned on for them so this is i might use one of these for bible study because <laughs> they asked for a small ruler i don't have one <laughs> so you see because uh, i'm at my desk there's a ruler in my there's several well, i have a in my big desk. ruler but it's hard to do a big ruler with the bible what um, is what it wants to do with the, the i ruler? guess to underline i don't know um so that's this, and then... Um, I didn't catch that piece of information. Obviously, I wasn't paying as good attention during class as I thought it was. Um, I, and there's a, I got an email today from them. Oh, I haven't checked my email yet today. Um, did you have anything else? Um, I do. I'm just trying to find my needle thingy so I can... Well, I'll just use this one. There it is. That, this is the one that belongs to it. I need to get up to grab my stash and hands over there. I might have to get up and get the scissors. Um, I can get this open. I, hang on. Give me. Oh, give me, please. <laughs> That is not very rude. Oh, okay. I never do it that way, so... Yeah. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to just say, give me. That's rude. Sounds like <laughs> somebody else I know. Oh, man. I really apologize. <laughs> okay. What are you showing? Go, go ahead and show your TI to get up and grab Okay, I got a purple package. I really... And you guys heard me mention this on the podcast last time, that I needed to get more of this tea because I liked it so much. That's the one I'm drinking today. So I ordered some. It's a chocolate mint like a cookie oolong tea. Oops. So I got three of them. Here, Taya. Um, Kifus. So I got two for myself and one for Taya. I swear, I keep losing magnets from this thing. And then I got uh, Comfort Blend. Here, you have this too. Comfort oh, Blend. Thank you. Blend black tea. So, yes, I wanted to make sure I had enough of this. Hopefully it won't go away for a while, but yes. I wanted this. I'm just trying to grab. Oh, what did I drop? Oh, you just knocked over my show notes. You know, my hips hit everything. I need to, like, chop them in half. Okay, let's see where I was at here. This uh, is why I can't get up or do anything during the podcast, because I knock everything over. Okay. Good thing I won't need water at any point. Okay. okay. Squeezing back in. You might want to protect your show notes from the hips. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mom gave me a mini skein. Fingering weight, right? Yes. It's a 20 gram mini, about 93 yards. So good for color work. Um, where did you go? This is, okay, this is for my pattern, right? Because I don't want to lose this again. Yes. Okay. I, look, I had two small magnets on here. They're gone. Mm. 
had it had one of them five minutes ago. Oh, it's around there somewhere. Oh, well, the other one was it's on my desk somewhere. <laughs> um, I'm sure if I really need if I keep running through them, I could probably look up on Amazon magnets like mm -hmm. this. Magnet strips. Magnet strips, yeah. But so the showed you the yarn. Don't know where I put it. I'm lose this if you're not careful. Um, where did I put the yarn? What yarn? The yarn that I just showed five seconds ago. Oh, I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. I swear, I lose stuff. What is my brain? I lose everything. Okay, I guess I'll find it eventually. Yeah, it's about, as long as it doesn't join Nightwing. Um, <laughs> I, there it is. I found it. Okay. Then I picked up some paracord because uh, they had more blues that I didn't have. Blues and greens. Um, I would consider this a green base. Do you think teal's more of a green? It's not teal, it's turquoise. Well, the, I have another one that's called turquoise. Yeah, that's not teal, though. I mean, teal and turquoise are kind of um, iffy colors. They kind of... Yeah, I'm not sure which one is which. Well, and also they both tend to go some more green, some more blue. Yeah, because um, I have a turquoise that's called neon turquoise. Mm -hmm. um, and then this is teal. And they are definitely different. Yeah, I'm sure they are. Um, this is the teal. This is light blue. Pretty. And this is really pretty. This Sadly. would be really nice in the Mother's Day one. Mm -hmm. um, colonial blue. I like that one. Um, these are some of the colors that I wasn't seeing before in the weight that I liked to use for the cord. And I'm, they, I just saw them. This is one. They didn't have the other stripe one that I wanted, but this one was close. This is light stripe for, you know, sometimes someone might want to sacrifice beads for their kid, mm -hmm. whatever. Um this one is purple so it's slightly different than acid purple mm -hmm. very pretty very slightly different than acid purple and then this I one like is one. burgundy which I is like gorgeous that. um i know eventually i'm going to want to pick up on the oranges but i don't use orange a whole mm -hmm. lot pat doesn't this remind you of the skein you just picked up the cask of Amontillado? Amontillado. Mm -hmm. this i think would be really nice in a migraine rosary mm -hmm. That'd be nice with a Padre Pio or something. That's what I think too. Yeah. He, that's on my, like when I have a list of colors for Padre Pio, there'll be blacks and browns, reds, and then the, the Not the bright red, though, the kind of that no, 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 the, red. No, no, I have um, a, uh, it's called a, what's it called? Imperial red, mm -hmm. I think. And then I have just normal red, but I won't right. use normal red, I'll use imperial red, and then I'll use burgundy. Right. Um, won't use any of the purple or anything. Very dark colors for him. Mm -hmm. Maybe a forest green. Yeah, I have a forest green that I could use. Now this is, of course, a, a slighter, lightly weight cord than some of the other ones that I have for him, but it, it still gives options. Some of them will have heavier cords, some of them won't. But they're all at least 90, right? Uh, some of them, it's either the 95 or the 90. That's what I said, they're all at least 90. They're all at least 90, uh -huh. yes. Okay, anything else for that? Um, that is all for acquisitions for me. That leads us on to reading. My shop. Oh, shop. I don't have a whole lot of news because I haven't been designing like I should. Right. Um, um, my, the only news I have is what I told you is I pick up the only one that's not my paracord where I can tell you what the strength is. Uh, it's just a normal um, cord. It's good to cord. People haven't had any complaints about it, but I moved to who to one that's definitely listed as a paracord, mm -hmm. which is what I'm using now. But people liked this color, and I've had people asking for the color I had in Davina's mm -hmm. mental health rosary. So I went and I found a spool of just that color. Um, so I have that now. That's my only one that's not a paracord of either 90 or 95. I'm not sure what the weight is for that. Yeah. Um, but people like it and I do have a repair um, the option if, if it breaks on people, although no one's had any complaints. Now, for me, um, nothing really new for the shop. I did <laughs> kind of a funny thing. I had a custom order from somebody uh, for my worsted weight large skeins, and I I told this person, I don't mention their name because I don't have permission. No names. Um, so, anyway. This that was a reference. Yeah, I know. This person, um, I told her that I had the two different kinds. She had mentioned one, the Lothlorien, and then... I said, well, I have another one. You saw they attached the peacock yesterday, last weekend. So I finally got to put them up on the shop. And I went to put, I put them up and oh, the morning has been rough this morning. So I finally got it up and went to Out5, which is my advertising area, to, to set it up on Instagram. And it wouldn't set up and it wouldn't set up. 
So I went back and there was, and I looked and I said, it said sold. <laughs> so <laughs> she had picked it up between the time I posted it on um, Etsy and clicked on Outfy to start looking for it. She must it. check your shop when she wakes up in the morning. I thought it was, it made me so happy. It actually made my day. So I'm really happy that she likes it. I did sell both the um, Lothlorien and the Enchanted Peacock. I can make those again. They're both gorgeous yarns. Yeah, I love them. They're really pretty. And I, and I, I appreciate that fact that you like them. I, they're, they're some of my favorites. Mm -hmm. I um, have all the skeins of yarn that I've had shown you the last few podcasts now have ball bands. So I will be taking photos as soon as I get the chance to start putting them in to the shop. But um, that might take a little time. But it is, it's going to be up uh, pretty soon, I'm thinking, because I want to go back to the dye pots and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So... Nothing real major except I was really excited about that particular sale. It just made me laugh because I was having a really rough morning and to have that happen and feel like going, oh, not another thing going wrong. And then finding out that it was just that it got snapped up so quickly made me really happy. <laughs> <laughs> so that was great. So thank you to that person very much. Yes. Um, okay, so that moves on to... Bookses. Bookses. Um, I'm basically reading the same books, you know, Mother Teresa and the Dragonback series by Timothy Zahn. I think I'm probably in the middle of the second to the last book of that. Um, Flourish, we're going to be finishing that by the beginning of next week. Yeah, um, and then you won't necessarily see a book to replace it because we're doing a, a Bible, Bible study. study. Yep. And, uh, and it doesn't have a, a book with it. It's a the Bible's it's an actual the class. The Bible's the book for the class. Yeah. Um, Still reading Jesus, The Way, Truth, and Life, and A Woman for Our Times, which is about Mother Thecla. And I did read a little bit of The uh, Divine Office for Dodos, and abandon I'm reading Abandonment to Divine Providence. And I actually I, feel like with a class, I might be able to get some other reading on some of the other days, some other, like, of my Catholic right. religious reading in, because I won't feel like every day I'm kind of pushed to read something. Right, because we have to, uh, readings, but it's during the whole week. Right, so we mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, we have two chapters of the Bible. But <laughs> this time, but um, and and then I have a couple of them. One's a mystery with a priest. I forget what it's called. And one's a mystery with a ghost librarian. So that's kind of fun as well. Um, for me, I have there we go. Um, I finished a few books because I read Agatha Christie, and I can generally read. I have to make sure I don't read an Agatha Christie all in one day because I've mm -hmm. totally done that. Partially because I've read most of the books, and then partial, and sometimes I know I just want to get to the next part, and I know it's coming. Mm -hmm. The uh, then the other part is just because there's their quick reads. Like I feel like Lord Edgware dies. That was I feel like I have meant to read it many times, but haven't. But that doesn't sound right because I own I owned almost all the Poirot books. I didn't remember the ending um, for that one. So that's that was not kind one of, of my favorite ones, but I really enjoyed that it's one. It's good, but I mean, all of them are good, but I just. Well, there's some that I like better than others. Mm -hmm. Somewhere I feel like she forced the romance a bit because that really. They, she would end them with ro with someone ending up with someone else a lot of times because that was what was done. Right. But she didn't necessarily care about that part, so she wouldn't always build up the relationship right. necessarily. Um, she just did it because that was what was done. Uh, Murder in Mesopotamia was good. Mm -hmm. um, by the end, I kind of remembered what was going on with that. I knew I had read that one before. And then Appointment with Death is one of my favorites. Um, I finished that one, too. All those are five stars. If Some of them are like, man, if I could put this like as a six star, I would. Because I don't want to bump the other ones down to four because mm -hmm. they don't deserve it. But this other one deserves more than a five. Right. <laughs> now, ones that I've been reading that are whips, for lack of a better term, versus FOs, are uh, so I have Peace in the Storm, Meditations for Chronic Pain and Illness by Maureen Pratt. Uh, just like Mom, Jesus, the Way, Truth, and Life uh, by Marcelino D'Abrosio. Reading Flourish, but that's going to be done soon. Uh, Living Memento Mori, read part of uh, My Journey Through Stations Across by Emily M. DeArdo. Um, her past chapter was interesting, and I I think I finished one chapter and started part of another one, but uh, but the part of what I read was dealing with handling watching someone you love suffer. So from a caregiver point of view, which I thought was beautiful because you don't see that dealt with enough. Um, and she tied that into the stations of Mary having to watch Jesus mm -hmm. suffer and the pain that comes with that. Um, so I thought that was very well addressed. Um, the next two books are ones that I got 
from BookBub. One of them, I believe, was on my Goodreads wish list because I'd seen it, some, it pop, either popped up as a suggestion for me based on my reading choices or someone else I knew was reading it. Down Among the Dead Men, A Year in the Life of a Mortuary Technician by Michelle Williams. If you are grossed out easily, do not read this book. It takes a look at things, not in a titillating fashion, but it's a very clinical fashion, but it is detailed. Mm -hmm. So if you have an imagination where you don't want to see actually inside the mortuary, don't read this book. If on the other hand, that is something that really interests you, you're into medical stuff, maybe even to some of the true crime stuff, even though she doesn't deal with true crime, but you might have more of a, um, you might be able to tolerate it more if you like true crime, because you're already reading stuff that's maybe a little bit more detailed. Like I said, it's not inappropriate but it might be a bit much for people who do not already see things in clinical fashion. But yes, uh, she had started off working with special needs type people and then she just knew she kind of needed to change a job. It just came up she, on a whim. She applied for it, got the job, had no experience in that area. Actually, she was overeducated for it and, uh, it talks about how learning this kind of job is very different than anything that she's ever done. And yeah, uh, it was very interesting so far. Um, the other one I picked up, I actually read the first two chapters, even though I'm starting again from the top. I just finished the first one again. Amazon did a really good thing with this book was where they had the first three chapters available for you to read before you ever bought the book. Right. So I read the, all three of the first chapters and I was like, okay. I'm enjoying this. I'm going to pick this. I mean, it was $1.99. I wasn't losing that much anyway. Book Bub is awesome. Uh, but it's Murder in Belgravia, Mayfair 100 Mystery Number 1. So I it's in I a series. That up as well, I think. And it's by Lynn Brittany. The idea is, and this is in the description, so I'm not giving anything away. This is set, I think, during World War One, And most of the guys are off in war. If you have a younger guy there it's because he's been wounded actually there's a point where your scotland yard guy took a bus somewhere a trolley or whatever they call it um and all the women there are glaring at him because he's not in any sort of uniform and why is he not on the front so he kind of he felt He's like, okay, I'm going to make a point of limping when I get off of here. You know, he does actually have a reason to limp, but emphasize it a little bit. He's like, he didn't, say, he didn't know, in his head he felt half embarrassed that he was catering to their mm -hmm. in, uh, annoyance, but he also didn't want to be thought of as, like, someone. Shirker. <laughs> right. And when he got off, he did, his limp did come out. Actually, he was inflamed. He had, his doctor friend had to look at it. But as soon as he started limping when he got off, all of a sudden everyone was smiling at him again. <laughs> <laughs> but it was really it was a little inside look, which was, I thought was really amusing. Um, but the idea is most of the men are out in the war unless they're injured. And mostly women are running things. But the problem they're running into now is more woman crime. Women crime. Um, and either the woman committing the crime or the woman being the victim or whatever... Um, and they don't know quite how to deal with, especially when you're dealing with the upper class mm -hmm. who were more insular, maybe wouldn't talk about certain things to men. Um, so he's putting together a team. It's, they aren't paid. They can't get any notoriety because his chief or whatever is not really, he was really against women policemen and stuff anyway, but he was allowed to put together a small team. A doctor friend and then a friend who's got really good deductive skills and they work under him and they'll have like a guy who will go with them for protection mm -hmm. um who's also another injured young guy come back who's a police officer so it looks like it's going to be a good story the concept is sound it's covering a part of that history which makes sense but you don't see it dressed very often um, I think Poirot falls between the two mm -hmm. world wars which is why you have so many young guys there mm -hmm. who aren't necessarily injured um yeah, because he, you t he talks about his convalescence that brought him to England in the beginning. Well, no, what brought Poirot to England... He, he was a refugee. He was a refugee yeah. from Belgium. The one who was injured after the war was Hastings. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, so I think Poirot lands kind of between the two wars. 
Um, actually, I think it comes up in Tommy and Tuppence that World War II might be starting soon. But um, this one covers something I don't see enough in novels is the guys are gone. We're having to deal with crime. And the guys who are there don't know what to do because they're not used to all this mass of female crime. Um, because they're out and about more. So I thought it was a very interesting concept. I'm really looking forward to seeing where it goes. I can't even remember all the names of the different book bubs I've picked up because I'm still reading Oh, heck, I, I, I'm not, I haven't mm-hmm. even going to try to remember all the names. I'll remember them. I'll mention them as they... As I start reading them, is my, the kind of my, thing. I've been pretty heavy on the science fiction, fantasy, mostly yeah. fantasy stuff, and then mysteries. And I, there's a couple of histories and things. Yeah, I've got some histories, mm-hmm. mysteries, history, mysteries, histories, mysteries, fantasy. Not as much sci-fi, but some um, true crime. I don't like true crime. I'm picky about my true crime, but I do like an occasional true crime. I don't like true crime. It's not something I need to read for entertainment or anything mm-hmm. like that. I can read something else. I don't mind the. Uh, you know, the other things that are a little more fictionalized, but... Uh, I think, because um, I also like forensic stuff. I like forensics, too. I, uh-huh. I used to, you know, watch Quincy and all that kind of stuff. I got, I used to watch CSI mm-hmm. um, until it got too graphic. Yeah, I, I had uh, two great courses classes that was taught by a lady who is a forensic scientist. Um, one, she talked about, actually, for forensics, the history of forensics, how forensics is done. And then the other one was big important cases that changed things like the Tylenol mm-hmm. uh, case where the person was putting was it arsenic yeah, in the they, t- put in there, they put something in the yeah. Tylenol and they had to gra- find all the Tylenols that's what got our safety laws for the um, to the seals and all that on the bottle so you know when it was broken right but interesting classes and that's uh, so I look at true crime I think a lot of times it's almost like a clinical mm-hmm step back when I look at the true crime. I can't read a bunch at one time. you got to be careful with true crime because there are fictionalized true crimes and those can be really graphic. Right. And that's not what I'm looking for is the fictionalized. I'm looking for, like example, Lizzie Borden case. Okay, what are the facts? What new has come out? Because her case was never... It was equivalent of a not guilty verdict in England, which was a thing if in history. they If they didn't have enough proof to convict a person but they really didn't believe they were innocent acquittal they would the the, the verdict would actually be not guilty and so the kind the not guilty hung on you in a kind of horrible way too mm-hmm. you'd almost rather have one or the other because not guilty people still kind of looked at you side eye so i don't I, that would be an acquittal here in the states yeah no apparently it was like an actual like that with a verdict was because not, not guilty. Not, well, the, not guilty is a verdict here. It means you're not guilty. Yeah, but that, that when they say not guilty, I guess it, it was different than saying you were innocent. Mm. It was not acquitting you. It was just saying we don't have enough evidence to prove mm. that you are guilty. I guess there were three verdicts that you could go for. It was my understanding. I think this one is done. It's just a little bit. Is it one, one underneath and multicolor? Yeah. I think that the, um, the weight is just slightly different. Right. So. But that's all for my books. Okay, that I don't. I already talked about books, so um, let's see here. Personal stuff. I mean, we have vaccine. Yeah, that we don't have really much in the way of personal stuff. Um, Apparently, the vaccine makes me bleed. <laughs> Just around the site where no one else in the family does. Uh, so we really don't have a lot to talk about uh, for personal stuff. I can't think of anything except to remind you that next Friday is the last Friday of the month, which means we will be having what the Zoom. Yeah. The Zoom. Oh, and I just want to clarify. The vaccine itself didn't make me bleed. I think I just bleed more naturally because mm-hmm. I bled as soon as she stuck me. Mm-hmm. So I want to clarify that so people don't get freaked and think that, oh, my gosh, the vaccine makes you bleed. No, no. I think it's just me and my funky body. So um, we have the Zoom on Friday. Yes, and the we following do. Friday, I think we have the uh, live stream unless we have to push it back for whatever reason. My, um, So we're looking forward to doing that. Our schedule should be going back to normal. Um, all the time. I think my husband's going to go back to work at um, a normal schedule every day, every week, so except for Fridays. So um, that will be, you know, kind of evening out there. But other than that, we really don't have a lot, you know, personal stuff, I don't think. No, I mean, honestly, it feels like half my day's taken off up with naps. Yeah, and I and I just... Uh, oh, recipes. I did make the cheese enchilada... It's just cheese and salads, not casserole. It was really good. You had green peppers in there. And um, 
you made your cheese enchilada mix, um, rolled it up, and then just covered the enchilada sauce. It turned out really nice. I had kind of like, you know, in those mix Mexican places, I was just missing like the tortilla chips and the rice, mm -hmm. where you had like multiple things on there. I had my enchilada casserole, be my black bean enchilada casserole, my actual cheese enchilada, and I wished I had something else, like rice. Um, it was kind of nice. Uh, and yeah, I think I'll be making that fairly often now. Something fell. I'll give it a second. And um, I also received a tip for my five dinners one hour, which they're the people who do the recipes. They also have a Facebook group. And if you ask questions, people usually will give you tips. And in order, you know how corn tortillas tend to break. They suggested spraying them like PM or something individually and then stacking them on a plate, paper plate and covering it with a paper plate and then heating them up for a short period of time to make them more pliable because mine kept breaking. So I'm going to try that next time. Um, so that'll be good. I probably should actually, even if I have some in the freezer, should make it again pretty soon so I can use up the rest of my um, right. cream cheese um, so I don't just have to throw it away. Right. Well, my parents are coming down here um, the beginning of May. So I haven't seen them in almost maybe over a year, I think. It's been a long time. So they're I think come. it has been over a year because they didn't come the Thanksgiving. They didn't come last Thanksgiving because of COVID. They didn't come Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving before, before that surgery. because I had surgery. So um, it's been a while since we've seen them. They came after that to drop something off that right. between the two Thanksgivings. Yeah. But I haven't seen them in a while. They're going to go to Williamsburg, and they're going to stop by here on their way. Cause they're, I think they did that last time when they went on the yeah, way to Williamsburg. Yeah, so we're going to see them. So I had to, I had to uh, reschedule Davina's uh, tele teleconference appointment for a couple weeks later because I haven't seen my parents in almost a year, <laughs> over a year. Right. So I'm going to see them, and I don't want it to be you know, like have, two plus years. Yeah, I mean, if we have if we have only three or four hours, I don't want to have that interrupted by a teleconference. No. So they're going to eat and, with us and all that, and then head out to Williamsburg. But so we're going to be looking at some recipes. Yeah. I know part of me wants to share with my grandma some of the Mexican stuff, but Davina won't eat it unless I were able to put a taco mm. in there as well. Yeah, I'm not, I, we'll figure something out. Yeah, um, but part of me wants to share that with them because I want it to grandma's take on the recipes. But the thing is, she's not Mexican, though. So no, she's, she's not, but she likes that kind of food. Yeah. She, um, it is kind of Davina's birthday issue. It area, is, so, it is. Um, we want to make sure she can eat. And I was very pleased that I was able to drink Gatorade before the COVID. Mm -hmm. I didn't think I was going to be able to do it, so I did that, and that was good. So that's about it for personal stuff, yeah. <laughs> Gatorade. Um, um, we need to look through my five dinners, one hour recipes, and see what Davina might like mm -hmm. to eat, because those recipes are pretty quick to make. Right. So um, we want to. Um, we should probably get out of here, because Mike is going to get out. We're going to have to do our stuff before lunch. I have to start the the meal so we want to wish you all a very very blessed week full of knitting crochet and crafting whatever makes your heart happy and we hope to see you back here for the fun in the woman cave ah next week this is the 10 hook and needles did podcast. you update it this time no episode 451 and that's a wrap <laughs> bye ignore what the screen the clapper says yeah <laughs> can't be bothered with such things. Uh, you might want to at least take the number off of there. Why? <laughs> because then at least it, it's not numbered. Well, why? <laughs>